You won't believe some of these mythical creatures from Native American mythology. The Anayi, creatures born from women who were intimate with inanimate objects. The cannibalizing Wendigos, the protective deer woman, the amazing Thunderbirds, and the mysterious Skinwalkers. Today, we're going to explore and discover these amazing beings, so sit back and relax as we talk about the Native American mythical creatures here on Wild Mythology. The Wendigo is a terrifying and malevolent creature, particularly among the Algonquian-speaking peoples of North America. The Wendigo is often traditionally depicted as a cannibalistic, supernatural being with a ravenous hunger for human flesh and an insatiable appetite that drives it to commit gruesome acts. The physical appearance of the Wendigo varies among tribal traditions, but common characteristics include an emaciated and towering figure, often with icy or ashy skin, a lack of lips, long bony limbs, sharp elongated claws, eyes deep in their sockets, and sometimes a heart made of ice. Supposedly, one can tell if a Wendigo is nearby by the appearance of a sudden snowstorm and the smell of a decaying body. In popular culture and movies, the Wendigo is frequently depicted as having a deer skull for a head, adorned with imposing antlers emerging from the crown of the skull. While the deer skull looks pretty cool, it's important to note that that description has no connection with any description from Aboriginal lore. One of the most prominent features of the Wendigo legend is its association with the harsh winter months and the extreme conditions of the northern wilderness. In these cold months, it's said that those who are extremely greedy and hoard food and supplies for themselves are susceptible to being possessed by an evil spirit that will transform them into a Wendigo. The same will also happen to individuals who resort to cannibalism. In some tribal stories, a Wendigo will grow in size with every human they eat. While the majority of Wendigos are portrayed as mindless beasts, there exist rare instances where some retain their sentience and the ability to communicate. Unfortunately, these sentient Wendigos remain malevolent creatures. According to legend, Wendigos are endowed with remarkable physical prowess, including the ability to sprint at incredible speeds both on land and jumping through trees. The notion that Wendigos can be dispatched with silver as depicted in popular culture stems from a misconception originating with European settlers who arrived in North America. These settlers, upon encountering Wendigo legends, mistakenly connected them with their own werewolf myths, giving rise to the misconception that silver could harm a Wendigo. The Wendigo is not only a symbol of physical hunger, but also of spiritual corruption and a violation of the natural order. Its insatiable greed represents a spiritual disease, and those afflicted by it are often seen as lost to their own inner darkness. Thunderbirds hold a significant place in the mythology and folklore of numerous Native American tribes, particularly in the Great Plains and the American Southwest. These majestic bird spirits are revered as divine protectors and have the ability to create thunder by flapping their wings and shoot lightning out of their eyes. Often described as colossal birds with wingspans that can blot out the sun, they're said to be strong enough to pick up and fly with an adult whale in their claws. In legend, Thunderbirds emerged as humanity's protectors against malevolent spirits and watery creatures, including the likes of the underwater panthers and the horned serpents. These magnificent birds are said to make their abode atop a grand floating mountain, serving as the harbingers of storms and rains. Their influence can bring either great abundance or immense harm to the earth, contingent upon whether they perceive human actions as transgressions of moral boundaries. Their most formidable adversaries are the underwater panthers and horned serpents, who harbor a desire to sow disaster and chaos in the natural world. The Thunderbirds have valiantly engaged in century-long battles with them to maintain equilibrium in the realm of nature. 
According to the legend, Thunderbirds bestow special abilities upon individuals, and those who have visions of these majestic raptors are believed to be destined for leadership as chiefs. Deer Woman, also known as the Deer Lady, holds a significant place in the spiritual narrative of many indigenous tribes. She is often portrayed as a young and alluring woman adorned with antlers and deer's feet. In the ancestral tales, it is recounted that she was once a beautiful human woman who suffered mistreatment at the hands of a man and was abandoned to her fate. During this dire moment, a deer came upon her lifeless form and laid by her side throughout the night. By morning's light, the human woman had undergone a profound transformation, reborn as the entity known as Deer Woman. Afterwards, Deer Woman began to captivate the hearts of men with her extraordinary beauty. Once ensnaring a man's affections, she would lead him away from his family and home. If the man had a history of violence or had ever harmed a woman, Deer Woman's response was swift and lethal as she would bring about his demise by way of her powerful stomps. Conversely, if the man had a record of non-violence and had never wronged a woman, she would keep him until he gradually withered away. However, the enchantment held by Deer Woman was not without its conditions. If at any point a man happened to glance downward and behold her hooves, the spell would shatter, offering him a fleeting opportunity to escape her allure, provided that Deer Woman permitted his retreat. Emerging from Navajo legends, skinwalkers are malevolent witches with the uncanny ability to morph into an animal. These beings, also known as Yinald Lushi, meaning by means of it, it goes on all fours, can assume the form of various creatures such as wolves, bears, birds, coyotes, and foxes. Unlike werewolves who are forced to transform, Skinwalkers possess the choice to do so at their discretion. In contrast to werewolves who often succumb to a murderous frenzy, skinwalkers possess the ability to maintain their intelligence while in animal form. This distinct trait enhances their malevolent nature, as they can employ psychological tactics to terrify their victims, even opting for psychological torment over immediate violence, should they choose to harm at all. According to legend, becoming a skinwalker happens when a medicine man or woman disrupts the natural order through corrupt means, which might involve actions like murder, especially the killing of someone close to them. Skinwalkers are said to don the skin of the animal somewhere on their body, corresponding to their intended transformation, selecting it based on the task at hand. Typically, they employ animal skins at night when the transformation is desired since the wearing of anything other than sheep or buckskin is usually a telltale sign of a skinwalker's presence. In alternate tales, identifying a skinwalker can be achieved by gazing into their eyes. In human form, their eyes bear a beastly appearance, while in their animal guise, they emit an eerie red glow. However, caution is urged when making eye contact with these entities, as they can also delve into one's thoughts if stared at for too long. Another dangerous ability skinwalkers are said to have is the ability to mimic the voices of any animal and human. To rid oneself of a skinwalker, the assistance of a powerful shaman who possesses the appropriate spells and incantations to turn the skinwalker against itself is required. Additionally, it is believed that skinwalkers are weak to bullets coated in white ash, but only if these bullets are aimed at their neck or hand. From the Inuit mythology of the Arctic, we have Uklut, a half-wolf, half-killer whale hybrid that is extremely fast on land and a swift swimmer in the sea. It's highly aggressive and is known to fight and kill men. One legend speaks of a man who was so obsessed with the sea that he would stay away from his village for days on end just to be next to the water. One time, when he returned home, the village shaman cursed him for abandoning his people and responsibilities, and afterwards he was banished from the village. So the man left, but he soon learned that the curse had made him unable to feel full after he ate. After weeks of being starved, he ran into some wolves that he was luckily able to kill. 
but as he began to eat them, his body underwent a transformation into a giant wolf. Still feeling his obsession for the sea, the wolf walked into the ocean and disappeared under the water. But what reappeared and walked onto the ice was no wolf or man. No, it was Uklet, a cursed creature with the properties of an orca and a wolf. Feeling terribly hungry and wanting revenge, Uklet returned to his village and devoured all but a single child. When hunters from a neighboring village came to the scene, the surviving child told them of the deadly creature. So the hunters followed Uklet's footprints, only to find the tracks ending at the edge of the sea. Stone Man and Spearfinger are two monsters from Cherokee legend that live in a territory spanning from East Tennessee to the western parts of North Carolina. While both are creatures made of stone, they are mortal enemies because they compete for the same food. Like I just mentioned, Stone Man is described as a tall man-like creature with skin made of stone, and according to legend, he carries a magical cane that leads him to his victims, lets him manipulate the earth, and lets him read and control the minds of others. He enjoys crushing his victims' bodies, with the exception of their liver, which is his favorite food. Stone Man's biggest weakness is apparently menstruating women. The more menstruating women that stand in front of him, the weaker he gets until he freezes into deceased stone. Spearfinger is described as an ugly witch with skin made of stone and a left index finger shaped as a spear. She has the ability to transform into an innocent old lady and into the family members of her victims. Using her spear-like finger, she usually stabs her victims in the back and then rips out their liver, which happens to be Spearfinger's favorite food. According to legend, Spearfinger is incredibly strong as she's able to pick up and throw boulders. A sure way to tell that Spearfinger is near will be the sight of boulders fused into structures. She has the ability to fuse stones together, a trick she once used to try and reach the heavens. Over time, there have been many stories of hunters trying to kill the witch, but her stone skin makes it impossible to shoot her with arrows, and trying to hit the same spot on her body to destroy the stone is difficult when she's slashing them with her spear finger. Although Spearfinger is quite terrifying, she does have a few weaknesses. The first is that once she transforms into a family member, she won't be able to transform back as long as someone is looking directly at her. Her most deadly weakness, though, is that she carries her own beating heart in her clenched right hand. According to legend, the only way to kill her is by severing her right hand from her body. Underwater panthers, also known as Mishupeshu, are formidable beings featured in the legends of numerous Native American tribes, particularly those residing in the Great Lakes region. According to legend, the underwater panthers are the opposing enemies of the Thunderbirds. Whereas Thunderbirds are the lords and guardians of the sky, underwater panthers are lords of water and are the guardians of lakes. Unlike the Thunderbirds, whose presence signifies prosperity, the underwater panthers are associated with destruction. Together, these two creatures engage in an internal struggle, a cosmic battle that ultimately preserves balance in the natural order. An underwater panther is often described as possessing the head, paws, and body that resembles a giant cat. However, instead of fur, their bodies are adorned with scales and dagger-like spines along their back. Their distinctive elongated tails are another characteristic feature. These mysterious beings are also known for their affinity for copper, which they protect with unwavering determination. According to legend, underwater panthers reside in the deepest parts of lakes and rivers, where they wield the power to unleash disastrous storms capable of effortlessly devastating entire villages. Horned serpents hold a prominent and mystical place in the oral folklore of numerous Native American tribes, with their tales predominantly originating from regions like the southeastern Great Lakes and eastern parts of North America. 
These serpent-like beings are notably recognized by the presence of distinct horns or antlers adorning their heads, often associated with unique healing properties that played a role in traditional medicine practices. Among the Cherokee people, the horn spirit is vividly described as an enormous snake with regal horns upon its head. It possesses a brilliant blazing crest resembling a diamond on its forehead, and its scales emit a fiery, spark-like glow. Cherokee legend maintains that whoever manages to secure the coveted diamond from the horn serpent's head would attain the highest honor within the tribe. Yet, this challenge is not without peril, for the horn serpent exhales a poisonous breath that proves lethal to anyone who inhales it. Moreover, the serpent's scales possesses a mesmerizing allure, luring unwitting hunters even closer to the formidable creature. In the broader context of aboriginal legends, horn serpents often assume a role akin to that of the underwater panthers. Like their feline counterparts, horn serpents are considered guardians of water and stand as adversaries to the thunderbirds. Unlike the panthers, however, horn serpents are believed to offer healing or purification through their waters to those who make appropriate sacrifices. Hukwajis, creatures featured in the folklore of various Native American tribes, especially among the Wampanoag people of New England, are known for their mischievous and occasionally malevolent nature. Typically standing at two to three feet in height, Hukwajis possess humanoid forms with strikingly exaggerated features, including notably large noses and ears. According to legend, they hold the ability to appear and vanish at will and transform themselves into troll-like porcupine creatures. In one particular tale, Pukwudgies were originally kind and friendly towards humans. However, that all changed after the Pukwudgies were exiled from their ancestral lands by a giant figure revered by the indigenous people. This expulsion prompted a transformation in their behavior, leading them to become mischievous and occasionally malicious entities. Their actions ranged from playing pranks on humans to using their porcupine quills to harm them, or even kidnapping and resorting to pushing individuals off cliffs. The Ogopogo is a famous sea serpent from British Columbia, Canada, that gets its origins from Aboriginal folklore. The sea serpent is described to be 50 feet long and is able to move at amazing speeds. Said to reside in Okanagan Lake, the aboriginals believed that the Ogopogo was a spirit that protected the lake. In order to cross the waters, one had to sacrifice small animals in order to appease the sea serpent. In one legend, a visiting chief refused to make the sacrifice. But when he and his family went to cross the lake in a canoe, the Ogopogo whipped its tail on the surface, creating a whirlpool that sucked the chief and his family to the bottom of the lake. In the legends of the Navajo people, the Anayi emerged as a race of monstrous beings born from the unconventional unions between women and inanimate objects. This mythical narrative began as a dispute within the tribe, as men and women debated which gender held greater importance. To settle the argument, the sexes separated on opposite sides of a river, agreeing that the first group to cross would be declared the loser. During this period of isolation, some women engaged in sexual activities with inanimate objects, including clumps of bird feathers, cacti, bones, antlers, rocks, and fruit. This peculiar behavior resulted in the birth of the Anayi, uniquely shaped creatures that reflected the nature of their fathers. Regrettably, the Anayi turned out to be insatiable man-eating entities that spread terror among both humans and animals. An example of some of the various Anayi were the bear that pursues, a ferocious bear that ruthlessly preyed upon any humans it encountered. Another was eye killers, limbless creatures capable of emitting lethal lightning from their eyes. Traveling Stone was a monstrous rock that would roll and crush those who crossed its path, and the menacing horned monster impaled victims with its formidable antlers. 
The leader of the Anayi was a colossal giant capable of traversing vast distances in a single step and consuming entire lakes in mere gulps. Ultimately, Nizgani, a cultural hero or deity of war, was born alongside his twin brother. When the twins reached maturity, they embarked on a heroic quest to eradicate the Anayi, liberating the land from their menacing presence. The brothers successfully vanquished every one of the Anayi, including the formidable giant who was their leader. However, recognizing the Anayi's regenerative abilities, the twins ingeniously transformed them into elements of nature to prevent their return, effectively restoring harmony to nature and the balance. Amakuks are creatures from Yupik legend that enjoy hunting men in the sea and on land. Described as a shapeshifter, an Amakuk takes the form of a four-legged hairless beast with leathery skin, a tail, and a large rounded head with sharp teeth. According to legend, Amakuks have the ability to swim through any substance, including the earth and human bodies. Many legends say that if an Amakuk swims through a person, they instantly die on the spot. When an Amakuk attacks a hunter on land, it will swim around them in the earth, causing the surface to turn into quicksand. Once the hunter is caught in the trap, they become an easy meal for the Amakuk. There are also many legends about Amakuks attacking people at sea while they're in kayaks and dragging them down into the depths. The most interesting ability of the Amakuks is how they reproduce. According to legend, if an Amakuk is ever shot, it will split apart and multiply into eight separate Amakuks. In Aboriginal legend, the Rainbow Crow is a symbol of sacrifice. According to the tale, a prolonged period of harsh cold grips the animal community, sparking their concerns. In response, the animals collectively decide to dispatch a messenger to ask the Great Sky Spirit for relief. The Rainbow Crow, distinguished as the most beautiful feathered bird, courageously volunteered for the demanding journey. So the Rainbow Crow embarked on this perilous mission and returned safely, bearing the precious gift of fire bestowed to him by the Great Spirit. However, upon his return, he underwent a dramatic transformation because he was holding the fire too close to himself on his flight back. His once vibrant plumage was now charred black, with mere remnants of its former colors, and his melodious voice had been rendered gruff and hoarse by the smoke. Kalupalix are terrifying creatures from Inuit mythology. They are female humanoid creatures with long flowing hair, green slimy skin, and long bony fingers with sharp claws. They're said to always be wearing a parka and are sometimes described to have webbed fingers, scales, and fins or flippers. For supernatural powers, a Kalupalik is able to produce a horrible shriek that makes any who hear it temporarily paralyzed. They can also use their voice as a sweet song to captivate prey. Another power is that they can shapeshift into different arctic animals. According to legend, they live under the ice in the arctic lakes and ocean. When a child walks on the thin ice above a Kalupalik's territory, it will break through the ice, stick the child in the hood of her parka, and then drown the child. While a Kalupalik is invulnerable in its natural form, they can be killed if you can trick one to transform into a different shape. And that's all we have for today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and leaving a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you stay updated on all our future videos. Alrighty folks, see you next time on Wild Mythology.